So I wanted to talk about Feral Girl Summer, uh, which I saw in The Independent a little while ago. Feral Girl Summer is the latest dating trend to make single, uh, single women feel inadequate. A new TikTok trend is encouraging women to embrace their authentic selves. But what does it say about the pressures society places on women without partners? So as you might be aware, Hot Girl Summer was a thing that was promoted. Was it by... Who did it? Megan this Megan the Stallion uh, to capture the post pandemic spirit of last year trended on TikTok and Instagram. Hot girl summer uh, and feral girl summer is about not shaving your legs. It's about thinking. It, it, think flea bag with a sprinkle of someone who has been at Glastonbury for three weeks. Ostensibly, the feral girl summer is not about dating, but as with hot girl summer, its definition is dependent on it. According to the dating app Badoo, eighty-seven percent of female users felt pressured to have a hot girl summer in twenty twenty-one, with seventy-one percent saying that this impacted their dating life. So, feral girl summer is whatever the opposite is of hot girl summer. It's talking about female autonomy. It's not giving a fuck. The attitude is similar to that perpetuated by the cool girl trope. Problematic yet this seductive depiction of subdued femininity created for the male gaze. So this is somehow, this is a trend created by women for women, mm. but has somehow been uh, screwed back around to it being a product of the patriarchy and it's oppressive, cis, heteronormative. Is that what they're saying? That it's a product of the patriarchy? Uh, everything is. Uh, similar, another tic TikTok trend, goblin mode. Have you seen that? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I like that though. Goblin mode. The feral girl summer encourages women to forego beauty rituals in favor of more radicalized, unkempt aesthetics. You have to be your authentic self in order to qualify, and that apparently means throwing away your razor. Why? Because conforming to beauty standards makes us feel, makes us bad feminists. Is having hairy legs supposed to make us feel empowered when we have sex? And if it doesn't, does that make us a failure? So basically, it's a very unfalsifiable idea that womanhood is um archaic ideologies around womanhood and this is something that's put forward by men and you go well look at where most of the criticism about women's appearances come from mm. it's not men mm. it's mostly other women mm. men criticize men and women criticize women that doesn't mean that there isn't crossover but beauty standards for women aren't created by men we don't give a fuck about your new fast fashion and whether pastel shades are in and whether you remember a thigh gap when a thigh gap was a thing and now it's whether you've got like a big boom, a big bum. Mm. All of that came from women to women. It wasn't us. But the feral girl summer thing, I just think is it's very, very interesting because it's always it's showing very quickly this sort of vacillation from one extreme to another hot girl summer was supposed to be the pandemic's locked everybody down summer's here you're supposed to be your best self and go out and be glamorous with your friends and go to festivals and wear white boots and stuff like that within one year hmm. it's now whatever the exact opposite is well it makes sense they're really the same energy how do you mean like so it's the same it, it's like they're actually not only yeah they're two sides of the same coin right so it's really the same I, I totally relate to the idea of of trying to trying to look a certain way, right? I mean, my whole life I've been so aesthetically minded, but like not like with necessarily good aesthetics, right? I was like a hardcore kid in the Bay Area, all black, and you know, I had like a neck full of handmade beaded necklaces that showed you how straight edge I was, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, the right? black cross on the back of the hand when we went to shows. Sure, let's go. Yeah, so but like the aesthetics, like like my brother says, I took myself out of the game. Before I was even, before it even started, right? Like, um, they're the same. They're they're the same energy, because back to the bit about authenticity, like you're, you you have to kind of know yourself a little bit to try to be honest about your inauthenticity, and I think it's actually quite hard to be honest about your in, inauthenticity, um, to even to even grok it in any sort of way right it's like it's actually kind of running in the background a bit and it's hard to to get back then it, it's harder to get back there than it is to like try something like this which is very clear be hot this which is very clear be not hot you know it's like oh this is this, this feels like the same thing be you know yeah. be something maybe she's born with it maybe it's maybelline it's like be maybe it's hairy legs yeah. maybe it's under armpits yeah you know? there's a, a really cool 
uh, thing that I learned about mimetic theory. So you know mimesis, right? Mm -hmm. Rene Girard's thing. Mm -hmm. um, people copy people that are of high status, right? Megan the Stallion, high enough status to cause millions probably of girls to think about having a hot girl summer last mm -hmm. year. Now, there's two types of mimesis. I didn't know this. One is positive mimesis, which is when you model off somebody that's high status. Yeah. And the other is negative mimesis, which is when you don't model off somebody that's low status. So the problem with trying to be a, a contrarian or a heterodox or a cynic or a skeptic, a lot of the time, that's no more nuanced or depth thinking than the other person. Mm. Or if if all that you do is reflexively be contrarian to whatever the mainstream narrative is, that that's no smarter than the people that just follow it. You've just yeah. inverted whatever the algorithm is. If yeah. it's the same with you know what happened with the vaccines and stuff like that, that caused a lot of people to be so distrusting of mainstream media because they'd seen them sort of flip flop between mm -hmm. different narratives a lot that they became reflexive contrarians. And yeah. you go, well, hang on, do you really think that the opposite, unthinkingly, the opposite of whatever the mainstream yeah. says is somehow a more nuanced position than simply following it? It's yeah. literally the exact position. Right. Inverted. Yeah, and I've heard you speak of that before, that sort of reflexive contrarianness. And it's something I really relate to. I've like I I've experienced that a lot. Like my 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 mind my head sounds like that often. Or like when I look back over life and and see full like seasons or or phases of my life that were lived in something. Feral that were, chase summer. That were that were just inspired by not being like that. Yep. Right. Well, I mean, that's what this is. In fact, we've. That, I think that's a really good explanation for what it is. Mm. It's two sides of the same coin. You had hot girls summer last year, feral girls yeah. summer this year, and it's the contra It's the reflexive contrarian thing. Last year, we were playing up to what men's standards were in terms of an oppressive. It was created by Megan Thee Stallion, mm. not a man. Mm. Uh, therefore, this year we're going to disregard mm. uh, typical feminine beauty standards. And you go, well, hang on a second. When you don't feel nice when you do that, that's also not, that's not coming from some fucking bureaucratic organization mm -hmm. telling you about how you're supposed to be. It's just naturally what's in the culture at the moment about what is femininity. Yeah. And for the most part, that's created by women. Yeah. And this reflexive heterodoxy, reflexive cynicism, skepticism thing, it, it really isn't a smart solution. It's no deeper, but it gives people a little bit more of a sense that they've done some work. Right. And it, but it's like, I don't even believe this. I don't even believe in this world anymore. This world of bloggers talking to each other about who's responsible for this, that, and the other. First of all, I bet there's like, in terms of meaningful numbers of people who are in, who are like thinking that this hot girl or feral girl summer is important, it's like very minimal in terms of its significance. I imagine. I think you'd be surprised. Man. Maybe when but, it gets down to the girls' level, like the people want a archetype to latch onto. You know this. Yeah. You know this. The stories throughout the ages. They want an archetype. Yeah, but I guess it sometimes it's just like when it's 20-year-olds like like oh my god screaming about <laughs> screaming about like I'm like call me in like 8 years. Like we're going to we're going to get through some real shit. You've got to you've got to like life keeps going. It just keeps going, yeah. right? You're, like you're having feral girl for a summer. You're having hot girl for a summer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I mean that's a good point. The fact that like, what you do for the summer is a really important thing. Mm. Only somebody that's been around on the planet for less than 20 years can think that that's a big deal. Possibly. I mean, I love the idea that you can try on different shit. We can try on all of this stuff and cool, go, explore. Try a bunch of stuff on, right? And realize how maybe not closer to who you, how you want to feel you still are. Right? It's like that Jim Carrey quote about, I hope you get everything that you want. And then realize like you still don't have it. You know, like you're still missing some essential bit. Which armpit is, hair, which is which is armpit hair. <laughs> it is. I mean, I, I'm I'm around a lot of women who are who are consciously not not shaved. Have you ever shaved your legs, by the way? No. Have oh, you? Yeah. I right. How's it feel? Season of it. Oh, dude. So you had a hot girl summer. I had a very hot girl summer <laughs> back in the day. These are like these legs. These these leg hairs are like tree trunks. I, by the way, I would only go up halfway through my thigh because it's a nightmare going higher. I literally had hair shorts. I mean, just getting there's just more thick hair up there. Hilarious. But I just loved getting into bed with a clean shaved leg. It you never felt anything like it. And then you get one chill, and beep, all these little pricks start showing up, and it's done. Like it's a over. Turkey that's so being plucked. I, I relate to the like to the, like I don't want to be shaving my legs anymore, mm -hmm. right? I relate to that so much, even though I like that was you know I had my hot. It was just a summer I was doing that, uh, but 
it was i highly recommend i have a buddy who does that for um jujitsu because he's adamant that it helps him with leg lock escapes there you go he's certain that it makes slicker. him more slippery yeah, yeah exactly what's happening people if you enjoyed that then press here for the full unedited episode and don't forget to subscribe peace <laughs>